Musical content for this page provided by Goose Goose. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Vector W8 Garage. Today I'd like to cover some of the unique aspects of the Vector W8's rear suspension. It is a DD-ON setup and is very unique for supercar applications. Uh, they have utilized this in the past at Aston Martin and uh, Alfa Romeo. So it's a uh, tried and true system. Works very well for its application and its intended purpose and does some pretty interesting things uh, to help the car handle quite well and also reduces some of the weight in the vehicle because it uh, does not require that you have a giant cradle in the back of the car to uh, hold the engine, the transmission, the rear differential in place and uh, then support the uh, A-arms upper and lower etc. So it's a very interesting method to uh, deliver power to the ground. Hope you enjoyed today's episode and welcome back. In today's video I will cover the DD on rear suspension setup and I will give a brief overview of what it is and how it works in the following slides. There are several advantages to a DD on rear suspension setup when compared to a live axle or a fully independent rear suspension. Number one, reduced unsprung weight. The differential and axle shafts are attached to the chassis of the car. This is an advantage over a live axle. Number two, camber is fixed and does not vary. Independent rear suspensions have a constant rate change in camber over the travel of the suspension. Number three, Simplified shock and spring setup when compared to a live axle or independent rear suspension. Number four, camber and track or horizontal alignment can be set to a fixed point and then left alone. A unique attribute of the DD on rear suspension setup is the weight transfer from rotational force to the rear of the vehicle, which helps put more pressure on the rear tire contact patch and helps improve grip under hard acceleration. You will notice in the video the weight transfer of the vector under hard acceleration. It allows the rear end to squat, effectively transferring more weight to the rear end. This helps with reducing rear wheel spin.
benefits of this style of suspension setup are an excellent compromise between weight and performance. The use of four lightweight trailing links and one lateral link saves a tremendous amount of weight over a full frame or rear cradle that would normally house an engine, transmission, transaxle, or rear differential, depending on the setup, and also the upper and lower A-arms. There are benefits to an independent rear suspension setup. It does allow for one tire to have an optimal contact patch during bumpy or off-road conditions. The tire going over the bump will still have a similar contact patch to a DD on rear suspension setup, but the opposite tire will stay flat on the pavement under this condition, where the DD on suspension will be compromised and lose much of its contact patch under the same condition. Another issue with an independent rear suspension under hard cornering loads is the suspension tends to roll to positive camber on the outer wheel and more negative camber to the inner wheel. If camber is set to zero during high cornering loads, both tires will tend to lift with the outer tire leaning outboard and losing a contact patch on the inside of the tire and the inner tire having a good contact patch on the inside of the tire but unloading to the outside of the tire. Many supercar manufacturers try to overcome the positive camber condition by putting negative camber in the rear suspension setup, which makes the outer wheel in a cornering condition go to zero camber and hold its contact patch, but the inside wheel on the corner then has, to, has an over-exaggerated negative camber condition that severely unloads the outer edge of the inside wheel and tire. Due to the DD on tube diameter, and wall thickness, the Didion tube has massive strength and does not flex or deflect under varying road conditions. The Didion will hold the tires parallel with the road surface, the only limiting factor becoming the side wall of the tire, but the contact patch is maximized at all times. This is a major factor in why the Vector W8 is able to pull .97G on the skid pad. Here you can see an overhead diagram of the W8's DD on setup with its trailing links and lateral link. It is a lighter weight alternative to an independent suspension setup. The only other limiting factor to it is unsprung weight. The DD on tube is heavier than an upper and lower control arm, and you must set up your spring rates and shocks to cope with this. Rebound and dampening settings play a critical role in optimizing this setup. Just like the front suspension that we covered in our last episode, the rear suspension has safety wire on all rotating components. You will find safety wire on all of the brake rotor bolts and also on the inner and outer CV joints. Also like the front, the upper spring perch is safety wired to the I-Box spring. Also following suit, the rear hub assembly is the same as the front manufactured out of 7075 T6 billet aluminum and was sourced directly from the same stock car component supplier as the front hub, along with having stainless steel braided jounce lines just like the front. Please note the size of the rear brakes is equal to the front with the same massive Alcon calipers and brake pads in the rear. This is due to the mass that is over the rear tires and their width. Vector took advantage of this additional mass over the rear tires to assist with braking. I want to give a huge thanks to musical group Gus Gus and their manager Omar G. Varga. It's an honor and a privilege to feature their music on this page. I've been following the group since 1995 and for 26 years they've managed to stay on the top of their game in the alternative electronic and dance music genre. I can't thank you enough for providing musical content for this vlog. Thanks to Chris Ashworth over at the DT Rockstar One channel and all of his followers for following along. And a special thanks to Isaac Ireland for providing some of the video content for this episode. As always, thank you all for watching. Please hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons. If you can contribute on Patreon, it helps us continue to bring this content to you. There are links on our page for that. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.